What if I told you that the plants you see above ground could give you a hint as to what lies beneath? This is especially useful to geologists because it turns out lots of the earth is covered with plants, which makes geological mapping kind of tricky. Other than in extreme deserts, the far north boreal regions, and alpine areas, plants are all over the place. So why not use them for mapping? It's a study called geobotany, and it studies the relationship between vegetation and geology. Certain plants tend to associate with specific rock types. For example, limestone, dolomite, shale, and rock salt are all known for their associated floras. Of course, climate influences plants, and so does the soil, but the rock underneath, the parent material of the soil, can determine the moisture level, nutrient availability, and essential elements. Unique flora can develop in places with high concentrations of heavy metals like nickel, zinc, and lead. That's what you call an indicator species, and it's the kind of thing that you look for if you're a geobotanist. In fact, gold, silver, platinum, emerald, and even diamond can be located with the aid of indicator species. Some plant and mineral relationships were known by ancient humans, and they used indicator plants to find key minerals, metals, and other important resources. When you got nothing but woodlands in time, you tend to notice things like which plants grow on which rocks. You know how some gemstones only form under the exact right geologic conditions? Well, so do some plants. Take a look at the Great Basin, for example. It's in the American West and covers much of Nevada, and it has some unique plants. Big sagebrush plants occur on sandstone, but transition abruptly to bristlecone pine when they're on dolomite. Nearby in Arizona is another interesting plant occurrence, California poppy, a beautiful sunset-colored flower. It does occur in other states, but when in Arizona, it means there's copper mineralization nearby, which in turn indicates the presence of a fault line. A fault line is a crack in the Earth's surface along which earthquakes usually occur. So this is super important information to have. All of that info from some yellow flowers. In Utah, there are 247 plant species that are found nowhere else on Earth. And even within the state, they're limited to growing on a single geological unit. The Green River and Navajo, Mancos, and Chinle formations all play host to endemic plant species that you can't find anywhere else in the world. If you've ever cared for houseplants, you know that some of them need very specific conditions in order to thrive, and others can get by with the occasional splash of water and some kind words. Some plants will die outright, but some plants will survive with altered characteristics, stunted growth, and differences in the leaves and flowers of plants of the same species can also indicate what minerals may lie beneath the surface. Iron, manganese, copper, zinc, phosphorus, and calcium can all cause chlorosis in plants. It's a yellowing of the leaves caused by a hindering of the photosynthetic process, which is, of course, how plants get the energy to do plant stuff. Serpentine syndrome causes plants to have stunted growth and to grow widely spaced apart. That's caused by soils derived from serpentine. This means the presence of toxic minerals in the soil like nickel, chromium, and cobalt. Pandanus candelabrum, or the chandelier tree, grows most notably in Liberia, where it shows an interesting adaptation. It has learned to grow in soil that is rich in magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus, which come from weathered kimberlites. Kimberlites, of course, can have diamonds in them. So if you're in Liberia and you see chandelier trees, there could be diamonds below your feet. Those aren't the only trees that can lead you to pay dirt, though. Eucalyptus trees have been found to contain trace amounts of gold in their leaves. The roots of a eucalyptus can stretch over 100 feet deep and can actually absorb teeny tiny particles of gold, sending it to its extremities. Trees that are closer to gold prospecting sites have been found to have more parts per million of gold than trees further away from the sites, meaning that eucalyptus trees could help in the hunt for gold. It's not just minerals and metals that can influence plants, however. The western spiderwort flower normally has blue stamens, but when exposed to radiation, the stamens turn pink. Speaking of radiation, the U.S. Department of Defense actually invested some money in researching geobotany. Their plan is to use plant mapping to figure out where underground storage facilities are, including nuclear stockpiles or locating uranium itself. Other valuable resources like aluminum, tungsten, and magnesium could also be located using these methods. These sites could then be targeted with sanctions or siege or to disrupt the supply of these resources. Turns out geobotany isn't just for geologists and botanists. 
That's all for today, guys. Try figuring out what indicator plants are in your area and let us know what they are down in the comments. And remember, plants can indicate lots of things, not just gems and minerals. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.